I've been making and selling these rod wrapping jigs on my channel through eBay for quite a while now, and it's been a real positive experience. I've gotten a lot of really nice feedback from people about them. I enjoy making them. I enjoy sending them to people that are going to put them to use. One of the challenges, though, in building those is coming up with ways to speed up my productivity in the build process. And this video is just kind of something I wanted to put out that shows how I make one specific part for that jig. I don't see any reason why this method wouldn't work with a lot of different materials, aluminum, brass, carbon fiber, high density polyethylene, polypropylene. There, there's a lot of things I think that you could use this method for to make washers that would be handy for a lot of people to have. So I hope you enjoy the video and I hope my explanation is clear. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comments section. Uh, please try to keep everything productive. If you have criticisms of the technique put it in the comments and that way it can be discussed people can see the pros and cons but i really think for a lot of people this will be a handy method to use i just wanted to put it out there that way others can take a look at it and see if they think it might work for them in their situation i haven't tried this technique yet to turn some aluminum but i'm going to try it on these pieces of tin can to see if i can turn this down into some very thin washer material these could be used for shims i'm going to try that and We'll see if this technique works as well for this thin aluminum as it does for plastic. And I'll show you how I put all this together. It's real easy and I think it might be helpful to some people. So let's see how turning this down goes and then we'll go from there. I want to tighten the tailstock down really tight up against this to compress all that aluminum so that it can't spin in there. Okay, so I've got it all tightened down in there and I'm going to turn this machine on and I will probably turn the volume down some on this part of the video just because the machine's kind of loud and I don't think you necessarily want to hear that. It could be <laughs> traumatic once the machine turns on, but I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit on this part. Hopefully these come out as well as the plastic washer that I made. I've got that turned down close enough that I'm going to pull it off and take a look at it. Usually the first washer and the second washer on the plastic washers that I've made have been kind of a sacrificial piece. Um, all the ones in between always turn out good. I'm going to see how this went with this super thin aluminum can material. Hopefully these will turn out okay and it will be useful to somebody.
Let's take these over to the bench and see what they look like. The aluminum washers that were made out of soda can, they came out great. I had two waste washers like I figured I would, and I'll see if I can show you what happens to the ones on the end. They end up pretty mangled up on the end, but we're talking about free material here. This is made out of a soda can. Um, this one wasn't as bad, but I'm just calling it a, a trash one. And all the rest were good. As you can see here, we've got a lot of good washers that can be used for shim material that were basically free as far as the materials go. Uh, I used two soda cans, cut them up into squares, punched holes in the center of them. Down here you can see I've got a group of plastic washers that I use on my fishing rod wrapping jigs that I sell. This was the reason I came up with this whole method to start with. I'm always trying to cut down on time that I spend building the jigs. The jigs themselves, I can build those quickly um, it's the little parts like this that can be time consuming to make so this method works really well and let me just show you a little bit how it works and hopefully you can apply this technique to something that you'll be using in the future this part here makes it all happen um, it's just a turned piece of aluminum and it's not a real precision fit as you can see there's a little play in it or maybe you can see that but it's pretty snug in there. So by the time you get this pressed in, this bolt pressed in, tied up against it, there's not a lot of wiggle room. So your washers are gonna come out fairly concentric. Uh, there, there's not a lot of deviation from washer to washer around the outside diameters or anything like that. This is just drilled out. I didn't even ream it or anything. If you needed a more precision fit, you could certainly do that. This part's just turned down on one end, and it's got a little flange here. So when you tighten this part down on the three-jaw chuck, the linear pressure coming in from the bolt being pressed up against this will compact your materials. And you could use a piece of cardboard or something on the ends. It could help in a couple ways. It could give you a little friction. That way, these aren't as likely to spin on the shaft. And it could also serve as a sacrificial piece so you get you don't end up with these waste washers. But again, the materials are free, so I, I don't worry too much about that. It wouldn't take much extra work to make some cardboard pieces to go on the ends if you wanted to do that. And this is just a long bolt. Um, the reason I got this type of bolt is because this is smooth and it's pretty uniform up and down. So the holes that are in the center of these are a tight fit on this shaft. As you can see, I used a regular washer that I drilled to a real tight fit and I pressed it in so this washer doesn't actually come off of this. The way this is cut, there's just a little bit of a shoulder there so I pressed the washer up onto the bolt and that just gives me a reference there as to what size I'm turning my finished washers. So this part is turned to about the same diameter as that washer so when this gets compacted then you turn everything down to this size and then you have your outside diameter and all I do is cut these into squares punch my holes in the middle put my squares onto this shaft chuck this piece up in my three jaw chuck on the head of the bolt I faced it off and then I used a center drill so that the live bearing center in my tail stock will fit into that and then you can use the tailstock ram to give you the linear pressure to help keep these parts from spinning. And really that's all there is to it. It's real simple to make uh, if, you, if you have your materials. And you could do this on a metal lathe, of course. I don't see any reason why you couldn't do the same thing on a wood turning lathe either. You'd have to do it by hand, of course, with chisels, but this type of aluminum, you know, it's going to turn pretty easily with chisels. As long as you've got enough linear pressure to keep those from spinning on this shaft, you should be able to do this with a woodworking lathe too if you wanted to do that. Now, you probably won't get quite the precision that you get with a metal lathe, but usually on shim washers or just washers that are there for a purpose, like these plastic ones I make, they're actually just used as a friction material. How concentric they are and everything like that is not super critical. Turning something like that on a wood lathe would be acceptable too as far as I, I'm concerned. I mean, if on shim stock, 
the thickness of it is is your main concern uh, more often than not. Now if you need precision washers of course you're going to want to do that on a metal turning lathe. So I looked on YouTube all over the place and I couldn't see this method being used by anybody. It, it just makes sense to me. I just figured it out. It's so simple I would think that surely somebody has come up with this and used this before I did. It's just such an easy idea and it works so well but I didn't see a video on YouTube about it anywhere so I figured I would do a video about it and show you the method I came up with to make these little plastic washers that I use for my fishing rod wrapping jigs. I just thought other people might find it either interesting or useful for something that they might need also. So exactly how thin are these shim washers that you get? Guys that's super thin. <laughs> That is very, very thin. Turning materials that thin isn't a real easy task unless you have a method like this that will help you out. I hope some of y'all found this useful, informative, and hopefully some of you can put this to good use for yourself. If not, hopefully it was entertaining enough to keep you occupied <laughs> long enough to watch the video. So that's all I've got for now, and I'll talk to you guys later.